você vai assistir agora a um encontro histórico entre dois dos mais importantes educadores da atualidade. À mesma mesa, face a face, encontraram-se Paulo Freire e Seymour Papert. Paulo Freire é o mais conhecido entre nós. Ele é o próprio símbolo da educação dos oprimidos, da educação dos excluídos, da educação dos pobres. Suas obras têm sido traduzidas e são conhecidas pelo mundo inteiro. E seu, sua proposta pedagógica enfatiza o diálogo, a proximidade interpessoal entre educador e educando. Seymour Papert é um matemático, estudou e pesquisou com Piaget durante muitos anos e desde então vem propondo o uso do computador como uma ferramenta indispensável para a aprendizagem. Ele é hoje, indiscutivelmente, a maior autoridade em teleeducação no mundo. Educação para os ricos? Não é bem assim. Papert concorda com boa parte das, das ideias e das propostas de Paulo Freire, sobretudo no que se refere aos objetivos e aos fins da educação. Mas e Paulo Freire? Concorda com os meios da educação de Papert? Este é um encontro histórico. Vamos conferir. Somebody's going to ask me questions like, what did you learn from Paolo Freire? Yeah. So I was wondering, then the answer is, well, everything, uh, a lot, but it made me think of what I learned from Paolo Freire. Uh, I used to have cut out of my wall a, a cartoon, a joke from Punch magazine, which showed a little girl who came to the teacher after class and said to the teacher, what did I learn today? And the teacher said, it's a funny question, why don't you ask me that? And the little girl said, when I get home, daddy will ask me, what did you learn today? And I never know what to say. And I think maybe the serious thing that I learned from Paolo Freire is that that's not just a joke. That it sort of says what's so wrong with the whole school idea of this girl is the teacher is doing something to this girl the girl is not conscious doesn't have a consciousness of what it's all about and that what we're really trying to do in education of small children is to you can say it all sorts of ways give them more consciousness the process more control put themselves in it but it's the opposite of the wanting to ask having to ask the teacher what did i learn today eu acho que o que o, o, o Peppert na, agora colocou com um, um certo gosto de humor é, é realmente muito mais humor do que, do que ironia. No sentido profundo da significação, da diferença entre humor e ironia. Evidentemente que o bom é fazer humor com relação à educação e não ironia. Quer dizer, a, 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 história, a história enfatiza a, a compreensão mecanicamente quantitativa do conhecimento, o que, o que, é, um, o que é um absurdo. Quer dizer, é, é, a garota podia ter perguntado também à professora, Veja, quantos envelopes de saber a senhora depositou em mim hoje? É, é, é essa compreensão do ato de ensinar, quando na verdade, é, e por isso ele disse com humor também, que, que a, a, o, o que alguém pode aprender de Paulo Freire é exatamente o contrário disso. Porque eu sou a pedagogia antagônica a essa, eu sou, eu sou uma epistemologia antagônica a essa, não, eu sou uma ética diferente dessa, entende? quer dizer, eu não sou nada disso, porque eu sou o antagonismo disso, e eu faço questão, eu, eu, não, gosto de, eu não gosto de discurso, eu não sou um homem bonzinho, entende? Eu, agora eu busco ser um homem bom. Mas bonzinho, Deus me livre. Se alguém quer me ofender, me, me chame de bonzinho. Eu não, eu não sou, agora, sou um jeito educado, e sim. Bem educado, direitinho, disciplinado, cortês. Isso, isso eu sou. E faço questão até de ser mais respeitador. Mas bonzinho, pelo amor de Deus. Não. Então, eu sou o antagônico mesmo disso tudo. Eu sou o contrário, o oposto disso. 
de estudo, quer dizer, eu sou por uma pedagogia da curiosidade. Por isso eu, eu defendi com, com o filósofo chileno Faundes uma, uma pedagogia da pergunta e não da resposta, que é exatamente a pedagogia que se funda nessa curiosidade, sem a qual não há pedagogia e que, e que aumenta essa curiosidade. Então, eu, eu já começo agora, quer dizer, quer dizer, once again I ask you to forgive me. I took advantage of your question in order to make a speech like the Baianos, you know, the, the Brazilians from Bahia, you know, who love the microphone. So I'll take advantage of your speech Excuse to make you. another speech. Uh, let's see, I'd like to, let's be very provocative. And I'm going to say something oversimplified. Paulo said, uh, Uh, you, you can't understand how anybody could say there's learning without teaching. Now, of course, fundamentally, that's absolutely true, and absolutely true. However, in the world as it is, there's a certain balance between learning and teaching, where the teaching is so overbalanced compared with the importance of learning comparado com a importância do aprendizado that it might become true to say that our task is to evaluate learning at the expense of teaching yeah yes, so I'd like to say uh, just say something about uh, how I see the role of technology in one aspect of how the construction of learning and teaching has taken place. And of course I'm oversimplifying, but within this concept I'm going to recognize three stages of learning. Now these are not stages like Piaget might talk about of the nature of the brain or the mind. They're stages in the relationship between the individual and knowledge. So stage one happens when the baby is born. And for From that time, there starts a process of learning by exploration, yeah. by Not touching, everything is put in the mouth, it's, you know, whatever. And of course, it's not only related to things, it's people as well, but, the, but the, there's a learning going on that's driven by the individual. That baby is determining. Parents might say, doing this, or, but they might think they are determining what the baby has learned, but it's only a minor effect. Primarily the baby is, the infant is learning in a self-directed way. Now, there comes a time when the infant is seeing a wider world than can be touched and felt. So the questions in the child's mind aren't only about this and this and this that I can see, but something I heard about, I saw a picture about that I imagined. Mm. And I think here the child enters into a precarious and dangerous situation because not necessarily but i think in point of fact in our societies there's now a shift from experiential ex learning by exploring to another kind of learning which is learning by being told because you have to find adults who will tell you things and this stage reaches its climax in school and i think it's an exaggeration but there's a lot of truth if one said that when you go to school The trauma is you must stop learning and you must now accept being taught. Now, now then that stage, so that's stage two. It's school, it's learning by being taught, it's deposits. And now, I think many children are destroyed by that uh, strangle. Some, of course, survive it, and all of us survived it. And that's one reason why it's often dangerous discussing these questions in among intellectual people because we, in spite of the school, we, we, what happened to us was that in the course of this, uh, of this stage two, we learned certain skills. We learned to read, for example, we learned to use libraries. We learned now to be able to explore directly a much wider world. Now, and I think that there's uh, an important sense in which stage three is going back to stage one. I mean, for those who have survived the stage two, creative people in a laboratory, in a philosophy, for the, in a philosophy seminar, an artist, a businessman, a journalist, uh, all the people in the world who are uh, able to, despite the, all the 
uh, restrictions in the world we live in to find a way of living creatively they are very much like the, the baby again. That we explore, it's driven from inside, it's experiential, it's not so verbal, it's not by being told. So, now I want to tell a story about my grandson mm -hmm. that shows, I think, what, how new technologies might change that pattern. This, when this grandson was three years old, I was sitting there and I saw him go and take from a shelf a videotape, put it in a VCR and press the buttons and the, oh, he said, he forgot to rewind it and he pressed the button and he rewound it and then he played the videotape. Now, what is interesting is that this child for the next 30 minutes, spent the next 30 minutes immersed in a piece of the world that was beyond his reach. Happens this particular tape was about road making machines, you know, all those big machines on the side of the road. They're very fascinating for children. And he loves this tape and he's gotten to know much more about these machines than I ever will. And I notice the difference when we drive in the car and he sees one of the machines, he asks more intelligent questions than I can because he's thought about it more. Now you see we've got to see what's remarkable about this. My first, when this incident happened, I saw him, the first thing that amazed me was this little child working this machine. I was amazed. It's amazing. There's this child working this VCR machine, and many adults don't know how to do that. But we really shouldn't be amazed at that, because it's not more complex than putting his toys away or getting his clothes out of the drawer. It's not more... Working these machines is not more complex in any way than the things that three-year-old children all do. So that's not what's amazing. So what's really amazing is the comparison between what he could do at three and what I could do at three. Because if I was interested in road-making machines, it was quite a few years later than three where I would know enough to be able to learn something about it except by asking somebody and being told. So here I see the, the, the big break that what we're seeing is that stage two is becoming unraveled as a necessary stage and that this child is beginning to short circuit stage two. And with what I saw there with this grandson who's got a few videotapes, it's only scratching the surface, just the beginning. It was already just a few years later, this happened two years ago, he could be having a CD-ROM and having an interactive, or he could use the internet and have that whole range, of, not just the few videotapes or CDs that he has in his house, but the whole, the whole range of, of human knowledge that in principle is accessible to him. So, then, so that's the end of my speech really, that I think that the key point about this technology in education is that it short circuits the stage two. It enables us to not put children through that traumatic and, uh, and uh, dangerous, uh, precarious process of, of, of the schooling and the... Now, of course, I said this in a non-political way, and I don't mean at all to imply that it is only that, that I don't think that school and the banking model of knowledge and so on is just politically neutral. It's been used by social structures as a basis for all sorts of conservatism and oppressive kinds for all sorts of conservatism and oppressive kinds of, uh, of, of, of policies. However, I think I see in these little situations the possibility that three, four, five, very small children are better and they've got a new instrument to refuse the the oppression mm -hmm. to refuse to be placed in this position and to maintain their curiosity and their own sense of their own intellectual power that they had when they were born see nothing's more ridiculous than the idea that this technology can be used to improve school it's going to displace school in the way we have understood school of course there will always be we hope places where children will come together with other people mm. and will learn but I think that the very nature, the sort of fundamental nature of school that we see in this process is coming to an end and I think that 10, 20 years who can, we don't want to be prophets, it's 
cards mm -hmm. coming out, but in this area, things have usually happened much faster. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the goal of educators has to be to think about new ways of relating to children and relating to ch in the triangle between the adult and the child and knowledge. I think we just need th thoroughly different relationships. And that's not going to come easily or automatically, and that that's the task. So you see, the other thing I learned from Paolo Freire is to make a long speech. <laughs> Whichever way he likes. His theory speech was profoundly stimulating. E por isso mesmo desafiadora, quer dizer, ela, ela instiga. Instigating. Eu gostaria de, primeiro, de, em primeiro lugar, fazer assim uma espécie de listagem não, temática, ou de temas, temas geradores, para usar uma terminologia muito minha, some, uh, e que eu tem, tem capto, e, ou que eu captei na, the, no discurso in your, in your discourse. Por exemplo, a dimensão histórica, the historical não, dimension, histó história e tecnologia, history and technology, história, geração e tecnologia, history, generation and technology, cultura, culture, cultura, falando em cultura, eu, eu incluo imediatamente cultura de classe, uma coisa, por exemplo, é que Classical. tem um neto hoje de 23 anos, um baita especialista nesse negócio de... de He has a grandson, como é que chama isso? Neto, não sei o quê. And he's specialized in that ele, ele faz um diabo com isso já. E tem a <laughs> neta de, de seis anos operando o computador. Mas isso é a minoria da sociedade brasileira. E, e o que dizer dos, dos filhos dos 33 milhões de brasileiros que a essa hora estão morrendo de fome? Quer dizer, qual é a repercussão da, da tecnologia junto dessas da maioria de crianças brasileiras, hoje. E daqui a 20, 30 anos, esses milhões de meninos brasileiros estarão mais distantes ainda da tecnologia. Eu, eu concordo, por exemplo, a análise dele com relação aos estágios, eh, aos três momentos que ele colocou na experiência da produção de conhecimento, eu acho que são muito lúcidos. A crítica que ele faz ao segundo momento, que é o segundo momento é o momento da escola, por exemplo, é uma crítica com que eu concordo, mas, mas eu deixo de aceitar a proposta, que, que não é uma proposta, é, 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 não é, é he, he does not propose. He says that this thing is coming up. That is the end of this school. It's not proposing. No, it's not proposing. You are in Portuguese, it is to estás constatando. And it's very hard to get educators to see that distinction. Yeah, yeah. It is absolutely necessary. It's difficult for an educator to see that distinction. For for me, é que isso não é uma constatação ainda. Quer dizer. Eu constato que a escola está péssima, mas eu não constato que a escola esteja desaparecendo e vá desaparecer. Por isso, então, eu apelo para que nós, os que, os que escapamos da morte da escola e que estamos sobreviventes aqui, modifiquemos a escola. Para mim a questão não é acabar com ela, mas é, é, é mudá-la completamente. É radicalmente fazer que nasça dela de um corpo que não mais corresponde à verdade tecnológica do mundo, uma, um novo ser tão atual quanto a tecnologia. Quer dizer, eu, eu, continuo, eu continuo lutando no sentido de pôr a escola à altura do seu tempo. E pôr a escola à altura do seu tempo não é, não é soterrá-la, sepultá-la.
É, mas é refazê-la. E eu digo agora por que isso? Eu não tenho dúvida nenhuma de que se a gente pensa muito remotamente, alguns milênios, naquele, naquele primeiro momento, naqueles primeiros momentos em que homens e mulheres comendo maçã ou comendo banana, não importa, agora tem umas pesquisas novas que dizem que o pecado foi por causa da banana. Não importa, maçã ou banana, que os homens e as mulheres, ao se experimentar socialmente de frente do desafio, terminaram por descobrir que estavam fazendo uma coisa que não sabiam bem o que era ainda. Quer dizer, não havia sequer ainda, possivelmente, na sua linguagem, o apelido da coisa que estavam fazendo. Quer dizer, elas e eles estavam sabendo. Mas, possivelmente, não havia o um verbo ainda. Ou, me seguinte, porque a linguagem só chegou muitos milênios depois que homens e mulheres já estavam de pé mudando o mundo. Porque as primeiras coisas que nós fizemos foi mudar. E dar nome à mudança só veio depois, com a linguagem. Portanto, começamos a saber, sem dizer que sabíamos, muito tempo antes. Aprendemos antes de ensinar. O e-learner before teaching. Foi exatamente a constatação de que aprendíamos sem ensinar, que nos ensinou a ensinar. Quer dizer, foi, foi a experiência de aprender, foi a experiência do último estágio, do primeiro estágio. Que inventou o segundo. Para mim o problema que se, que se coloca hoje é de corrigir os equívocos do segundo estágio que são todos, para mim, equívocos não didáticos ou metodológicos, mas ideológicos e políticos. Por isso é que tem que mudar é o mundo politicamente, é o poder que tem que ser mudado. E, e, e para isso não tem que falar que a história morreu, nem que as classes desapareceram. Isso tudo é conversa para não mudar o segundo estágio. Quer dizer, all the speeches of the new liberal, é perspectiva ou a ideologia, o work in order to preserve the second stage. In, nevertheless, in order, in order for us to change the second stage, we have to change the liberal speech. But can I just say something? <laughs> But can I just say something? Can I insert something there? You see that? Yes. You know, uh, will there be school? I must say, school's got to go away. Well, uh, it yeah, depends what we mean by school. But I think that what we need to note and very clearly, and this is something else I learned from you after all, that <laughs> we must be conscious and critical yes. of what it's about fundamentally. Yeah. And now, what's wrong with school is not details. Exactly. What's yes. wrong with school yes. is absolutely fundamental. That to say you're going to correct that is not very far from saying yeah. we don't have school. And I just have to make a list of them because I think there's some that you haven't even, I mean, I know you concentrate on the political which is there, and, but, and I agree, but let's take yeah. something, how ridiculous it is, why do we, well first of all, the idea that this should be school as a place where you say now you are learning, not living. And no, people no, yes, lugar, all the all the now we segregate people by age. Now we have a some for, for that. <laughs> All the stuff, you know, yeah. that Okay, well, we don't... Oh, look, I agree with you, but do you know what is my main question is? Is it an ontological problem or a political problem? It's a political, not well, ontological. Can't... No, but no. I want to say that... <laughs> It's all these things. I want to say that the school is not bad in itself. Yes, it is. In itself, no. Well, what I, do you I, mean I, school? I, I, If school means a place where children are segregated from society and segregated amongst themselves from by age and put through a curriculum. Now, go and ask any school
school administration it in the world. Being what are like you doing? It is, but it's not necessarily what should be. Well, I mean, we could have something else which you can call school if you like. Yeah. Yes, do we? Uh, no, <laughs> I, I don't yeah. have, but we have to create. Do you know what is my question? For example, I also don't have. Eu, eu, eu também não aceito. Eu também não aceito que me digam, por exemplo, que o homem e a mulher nasceram para ser dominados. Que os brancos, que os pretos são inferiores aos brancos. Eu não posso aceitar isso. Quer dizer, é isso que eu penso que eu falo de pensamento metafísico, e, e não científico. Entende? A escola não é em si mesma errada. Ela está. This is the difference between the verb to be and to be. Say, <laughs> star. Well, let me take it another way. I mean, here's another side of the politics and a quarrel with another statement that we who went through the school and survived it should change it. I don't think that we are the force that will change the school. I think that in the past, that there have been many people who have proposed more or less radical uh, changes of school. I mean, like Dewey said many things, and of course, he's. In many ways, he's sure he was uh, made himself impotent by neglecting the power of the political itself. But he, basically, he had a philosophy, and he said, "Agree with my philosophy, and you will change school." And I think Ilitch also de-schooling says this is a good idea. And I think I'm not saying that, as you pointed out, I'm not saying it's a good idea to to change school. I'm saying that it is inconceivable that school as we've known it will continue. Inconceivable. And the reason why it's inconceivable is that the little glimmer with my grandson who is used to following knowledge when he wants to and can get it when he needs it and can get in touch with other people and teachers not because they've been appointed by the state but because they, he can contact them in some network somewhere these children will not sit quietly in school and listen to a teacher give them pre-digested knowledge. I think que... they will revolt. Eu não sei se vocês... Quer dizer, há uma identidade entre nós até certo momento da caminhada. Em determinado momento eu digo para ele, goodbye, vou embora por aqui. Entende? E eles dizem uma volta por cá. Entende? E o pior é que os dois queremos a mesma coisa. Entende? E os dois queremos a mesma coisa. You Both want, of us well, would, would, like, would like to have the same thing. Onde está o ponto? Onde está o ponto? Onde está o ponto? Para mim, o ponto está em que a análise, a análise dele me análise parece, me do parece do mais metafísica e a minha mais histórico-política. Eu, eu acho que a diferença é essa. No que não há, não há diminuição nenhuma na perspectiva dele, não estou diminuindo nada, estou dizendo por que é que discordo. This is, just a moment, this is, for example, my, my difference, the only difference between me and Ivan Illich, for example. Because Ivan Illich, I, I remember the times I, I was in Cuernavaca uh, with him and the, and the, and the, who uh, autor the, the, Morte e Tenraidade, Jonathan Cozol, uh, Jonathan Cozol, ele, eu, um bando de, de, de intelectuais americanos, latino-americanos. Escassem vez o Ivan E no primeiro momento, Ivan Illich was against the, the schools. E no segundo momento, porque ele considerou que as escolas bad in themselves. As a, a, a bad institution, which is, should, should be cut. cut. Em, em um segundo momento ele estava contra a educação. Na segunda mão ele estava contra a educação. Já a educação. Isso no seminário que ele teve comigo um no dia todo, em, em 74, na, na, em Genebra, para europeus, filósofos, etc. Ele disse, há poucos anos atrás eu estava contra a escola e hoje venho aqui dizer que estou contra a educação. Éramos e somos muito bons amigos, e eu dizia para ele, a diferença entre nós dois está em, em que você está contra a educação e eu estou contra a certa educação. Quer dizer, eu, eu não estou contra a educação, quer dizer, porque eu acho que ela é um fenômeno, é uma criação nossa, entende? E que, e que, é, e que, que se dá na história. Quer dizer, minha briga, então, é, é para 
com, é pra, é, pode ser que eu seja então ingênuo, me bia é naive. Não, lyrically naive, naive não, maybe, I, I don't become angry because of that, if, if you say to me, no, it's, it's naivete, I say thank you very much, <laughs> <laughs> mas é possível então que eu seja ingênuo, mas eu, eu prefiro, eu, eu prefiro tombar na ingenuidade esperançosa de um dia poder mudar a cruzar os braços hoje na desistência fatalista de que não é possível mudar. I think maybe this is not a real issue. I mean, the question yes, is, what is right. changing school? And some good models that I see some places where uh, in some there are few school districts in, in uh, where they will allow a seed of change by for example, in some school districts in New York City, they will allow a group of teachers who have a proposal to start a small school with a different philosophy of education, and provided that they've got a, an argument and that parents are prepared to let their children come, they can set up. So it's still school, I mean, it's even the same buildings, and ultimately it's controlled by the same, the same people pay the, the janitor. And, but but what is happening in some of these is very different from the defining structure yeah. of, of what I'd call school with a capital S, which is about yeah. curriculum and classes and all, that we agree is a bad thing. And so I think it's possible that there would be a shift that within school, within schools, uh, alternatives can yeah. grow up. I think also we'll see alternatives growing up outside of the school. I think we see in the United States recently a tremendous increase in the homeschooling movement because people just keeping their children out. Yeah. So, so I think we, this change is coming about in all sorts yeah. of places and, and we work for it. Oh, yeah. And I think where, where I seem to be taking a, a sort of harder position that school is bad is uh, that, I mean, I think that there's a kind of uh, we call it narrow liberalism of discourse inside education that talks about curriculum reform, change of school management, and has a general model of, it ignores historical features too, such yeah. as there is this bureaucracy. This bureaucracy has its own interest. This bureaucracy is not doing what it's doing. Yeah. It's not open to argument about what's the best interest of the children. I mean, I'm not saying they're all bad people, but they've also got their own, uh, it's their own culture that they, they live in, and uh, I don't think we can appeal to them or try and persuade them or argue with them. Yeah. But uh, I'd like to add one more example to this. Mm. I think this, uh, I have a chapter in my last book, which has got translated in Portuguese, on, which I think is an example, I think there's an example of taking a historical approach on a minor scale, and that's not the big history of society. So, if you go into schools nowadays, you see a lot of computers. And almost everybody agrees computers are not being very well used. Now, the liberal discourse says they don't, the schools don't know how to use the computers. Let's do research and find out the best way to use the computers, and then they'll be used well, and they will have all sorts of good results. Now, I think it's exactly the other way around. The school bureaucracies know very well how to use the computer yes, in order to reinforce their own concept of school. And I find very interesting that sort of going in the 1970s, the first times I saw any microcomputers in schools, it was always a visionary teacher and a rebellious teacher who didn't like what he, she, often she was supposed to be doing and saw the computer as a way of doing something different. And, and often, this is a bit romantic, and they didn't really know exactly how this was going to, but they felt this thing. Yeah. And they wanted, and so it was, it was an instrument of radical change, because mm -hmm. that's what they thought it was about. And then, round about the middle of the 80s, you started, this thing got, it got into the hands of the school administrations, and the ministries, and the, whatever we call the commissioners of education, state education departments, and now what they did with them, no longer are their computers in the hands of visionary teachers in the classrooms, they now pull together and there's now a computer classroom. 
You and there's a computer key. curriculum and there's a special computer teacher. In other words, it's been thoroughly assimilated to the idea of the way you yeah, do things yeah. in school. Yeah, yeah. Quase uma pergunta, não? Que é a seguinte, quer dizer, a escola é um instituto socialmente controlado, com determinadas razões históricas e culturais de existência e com certo fluxo de acontecimentos controlado socialmente. Onde é que a gente pode fundamentar a nossa crença de que haja alguma perspectiva de mudança? Onde é que está o germe da mudança? O professor Papa te falou que as próprias crianças trariam essa mudança. Mas isso não seria acreditar, de certa maneira, que aqueles que de alguma forma são controlados passariam a controlar? Quer dizer, há uma, há uma aparente dificuldade que é de superar no caso das crianças, conseguir superar esse controle, que é o um controle social. Como é que a gente vira este jogo? Teachers in a school have demanded and won the right to do things differently, so they've escaped from that from that control. And I think that this is the political axis that we, one of the political axes we work with, and the the parents, especially the children, are going to be more and more allies in helping teachers bring down the the control of the bureaucracy in the school. So I don't say it's easy. And you might say, well, then it's not school anymore if they do bring it down. But that's our same semantic difference, so we shouldn't... Try. But that's what I think we've got to challenge. It's only through people challenging that control that there can be real change. Yeah, no fundo, a questão que ele, que ele coloca tem, tem, muito, tem muito que ver com, com os anos 70, com, com as teses reprodutivistas. Challenging that control that there can be real change. Yeah. É, no fundo, a questão que ele, que ele coloca tem, tem, muito, tem muito que ver com, com os anos 70, com, com as teses reprodutivistas que Althusser levanta. E eu, eu vi desde os anos 70 mesmo, quando eu morava na Suíça, e que li os primeiros textos do Althusser sobre isso, e dos outros, dos companheiros dele, e eu sempre procurei ver uma coisa, ver um outro ângulo da, da reprodutividade da escola, da, da escola como, tendo, tendo como tarefa a reprodução da ideologia dominante. E o outro lado que, que me bateu cheio de uma compreensão mais dialética, mais, menos mecanicista, é, 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 é exatamente o lado daqueles e daquelas que que, que se dão uma tarefa que é a tarefa de não reproduzir a ideologia dominante. Essa é, 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 é a mesma briga de quem quer mudar a, a política geral da sociedade. Eu, eu não vim, por, por exemplo, eu pessoalmente não vim para o mundo para ajudar a direita. Querendo, sabendo, entendo que eu posso ajudar a direita no momento de ingenuidade minha. Mas e que descubro e que me peço desculpa e não vou mais ajudar a direita. Quer dizer, conscientemente eu não ajudo a direita. Entende? Então, a briga é fácil às vezes, a briga às vezes é dificílima. Entende? Isso é a briga também da, da, da gente dentro das escolas. Agora, há, uma outra, há um outro aspecto com relação à conversa com, com ele, e, da, 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 do, do primeiro, do segundo estágio, do terceiro, que eu gostaria de, de jogar aqui. Em primeiro lugar, o meu problema não é acabar, não é preservar o nome escola. Pode chamar amanhã, pode chamar memória. Aonde vai? Vou à memória, está indo à escola. Não interessa o nome. Para mim. Interessa, interessa um, um, determinado, um determinado espaço e tempo onde determinadas tarefas se cumprem, sociais e não só individuais, históricas, políticas, etc. Por exemplo, eu acho que uma das coisas, se o segundo se o, primeiro, o segundo estágio é horrível, é horrível. Se o segundo estágio conseguir 
cumprir dentro, umas poucas tarefas assignadas, está certo isso, indicadas à, à escola hoje, de forma correta. Eu não tenho nada contra contra que se chame memória, que se chame encantado, e, 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 e ilha, ilha das Mulheres Bonitas, a escola se chama agora Ilha das Mulheres Bonitas, isso é uma maravilha, não tem problema isso. O que eu quero saber é como organizar certas tarefas, como, por exemplo, uma das razões da criação da escola, que ficou muito clara só, mas muito recentemente, é a de que, na experiência do primeiro estágio, você não chega a, a alcançar, como hoje não se está fazendo na escola, mas isso, isso é um dos pecados dela. Você, você não chega no primeiro estágio, você não chega a fazer a sistemática do conhecimento que, que assegure... Que assegure a continuidade do processo da busca do novo conhecimento. Quer dizer, uma das tarefas centrais da escola é proporcionar o conhecimento do conhecimento já existente e a produção do conhecimento ainda não existente. Diz isso de tu main tasks of this course to produce no, to get knowledge to get the knowledge of the already already known knowledge and to produce the knowledge not yet existent o primeiro estágio com a, as modificações tecnológicas, acelera indiscutivelmente a apreensão, a apreensão do conhecimento, mas não necessariamente da razão de ser do conhecimento. Por exemplo, de que? De trias de, 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 de neto dele. O, o, o neto pega, opera o computador com uma facilidade extraordinária, possivelmente maior do que, do que a dele, e a razão para isso é que o neto nasceu dentro da era da computação. Segundo, ele, ele nasceu então na história da computação e, e nasceu na cultura da computação. One thing is to be contemporâneo of certain technological advance, the other thing is to arrive before the advance of technology. Por exemplo, que, o que foi que eu, de que eu fui contemporâneo? PRA8, Rádio Clube de Pernambuco. Uma coisa fantástica, que até que eu ficava assustado, como é que pode falar longe e a gente ouvir aqui, e aqueles botões. Só isso. Computação, eu olho e me espanto com isso, entendeu? Eu acho, acho uma maravilha, mas eu, eu não sou coexistente. Eu não sou contemporâneo. E isso pesa. Isso pesa, fica no ar. A atmosfera histórica está cheia de computação. Está cheia de telefones. Esse que os malucos vivem pela aí. Celular. Entendeu? Quer dizer, há uma história dos fatos que engravida os fatos. Está entendendo? My, my question, meu, meu problema é o seguinte. This problem is... Como trabalhar a promoção necessária do conhecimento do saber comum, do senso comum, para o conhecimento mais metodicamente rigor, rigorizado da ciência? sem a organização correta de uma, or, de uma entidade para isso. Quer dizer, em, na, na, em última análise, o segundo estágio, e, se trans, o ideal é que ele se transforme e se... E, e, conti, não, melhor, e substitua a maldade da distorção do segundo estágio atual sem perder as características docentes dele. 
Eu não sei, pode ser que eu esteja completamente errado. Eu sou, eu sou contemporâneo da escola, mas não entendo. Você vê que um dos problemas... Eu não sei que eu tenho uma resposta, mas eu me challenge por ele, eu acho que isso é That is because look, it is not just looking at the the in the operating the the computer that I get the raison d'être for the computer. Well, yes, it's not simply by operating it's by. by uh, yeah, for example, this morning we were at this Millennium Three project, seeing some kids who were making objects on a computer screen, geometric objects. And these are small eight, nine, year old children. And so I think that these children, better than anybody in a primary school, yeah. knew the raison d'etre for not only the computer, but for geometric knowledge, because they were using geometric knowledge to, to, to make things on the but, screen. But yeah, they are learning that inside of a school. No, I don't think that. Well, is that a, do we call that a school too? They may yeah, now is, yeah, now is not yeah, now. a school. Yeah, it's not yes. a school. You see, I don't know how much they learn. I think that simply by having access to this computer and a very small amount of teaching of how to yeah. do something, they can start building and constructing things and, and they begin to see the exactly the raison d'etre, the reason for uh, having geometry. Now, once they've got that, I'm sure that Somebody who is well uh, articulated, who articulates yeah. can serve a great function in tidying it up for them. So I imagine kids who become interested in that might spend a few hours in a in a little seminar or course or where a math somebody who's really has a mathematical perspective will connect together the ideas that they have that they've emerged, developed, picked up from one another. We will need an expert. But I think that the time needed for doing that is maybe 10% of the time yeah. that we, we spend. In. So, so it's like, I see it like kids going to piano lessons or, or you know, that when they want to and they need to. And I imagine people of totally different ages who at some stage of, of, of wanting to, to know these things come together in a place where they... They, they can find them. But in fact, you know, it's exactly when you say well, the important thing is how do they see the raison d'etre, that's exactly what school does not give them. Yes, I and, agree and, and, with you. and which they discover by themselves much yeah. more readily in this sort of, uh, of less structured. But this is what I want. Right now, <laughs> you are not saying that the school does not, does not need to continue. You are proposing something different. Oh. Yes, this is for me fantastic because what really the school would have to be done is to challenge the epistemological curiosity of the students yes. in the order for them to, to discover the raison d'etre for the facts and for the, the, the objects of knowledge exactly. and not doing what she, it is doing now. It's, it's, if we can help the school because the students, when the students come to the school, they already know lots of things which the school never taught them. And now it is easier for a good teacher to say, look, all these things you already know now have a certain scientific explanation which I will speak about now. Well, I'm not, Fantastic. I'm not, I spent a lot of time at school that wants to do this. Yeah. yeah. But maybe, maybe that's a good, maybe that's a good thing, maybe that's a good place to end this discussion. I think I'm going to get a little, t I haven't been well the last day, but I would like to propose that this is a great discussion and we should set a goal in the near future of having a, a day or two of this kind of thing, maybe with these people participating more. And I think a lot, I think the dialogue could be useful to a lot of people outside. Good, good. Okay, I have to. Thank you.